seeing and hearing none, uh, opponents to this measure. I'd like to start with the two primary opponents first. Oh, still support, sorry, thank you. Oh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, Mark Henley, California Waterfowl in support, thank you. Thank, thank you, anyone else in support? Bill Gaines on behalf of the California Bow Hunters and the California Houndsmen for Conservation and Support. Thank you, sir. Anyone else in support? There's two chairs up here or there's microphones down here at the end. Good morning, Rick Bullock with Apex representing Ag and Outdoor Interest in Support. Thank you. Anyone else in support? Okay, opposition to primary witnesses and then we'll have add-ons at the end. Good morning. Um, Good morning. Chair Pavley and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Bill Yates and I'm a volunteer uh, with the California uh, State Council of the Humane Society of the United States, uh, the nation's largest animal protection organization. Uh, we were a strong supporter of AB 1213, the Bobcat Protection Act of 2013, and we want to actually take this opportunity to thank the members of this committee, a committee that uh, supported uh, that legislation. We oppose uh, Senate Bill 457 because one is premature and it undermines a regulatory process uh, underway. Um, the Humane Society of the United States has been engaged with the Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Fish and Game Commission throughout the effort to develop regulations implementing uh, Assembly Bill uh, 1213. Currently, uh, the Fish and Game Commission is considering two regulatory options. Uh, the first is a zonal approach, which would continue trapping in the areas where more than 70% of the commercial bobcat take occurs. Um, additionally, um, uh, the chair's bill, Senate Bill 1148, which also requires uh, that base fees for trapping actually cover the administrative and enforcement uh, responsibilities of the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Um, has been pointed out that uh, under this approach as we deal with this is that the annual fee uh, for um, uh, bobcats may very well be uh, in excess of $2,000. So there is a fiscal impact which the commission is also considering as well as the geographic logistics of how to uh, uh, implement the bill. Um, and uh, um, I, th I think that um, um, the comparison to um, bobcat management uh, to say deer hunting uh, regulations is that the Department of Fishing and Wildlife has never really had a great deal of information about bobcats at all. Uh, and it's much different uh, than what you might see with uh, something like uh, deer management. Um, so um, yes, the commission is in the process, they're taking public testimony, um, and uh, I, we do not believe that this bill is gonna do anything other than undermine an existing regulatory program. Thank you. Any questions of the primary witness? Other people that wish to lend their name in opposition to the measure? Um, also some substantive testimony. All right. Uh, Brendan Cummings um, on behalf of the Center for Biological Diversity. SB 457 would weaken wildlife protections under existing law and undercut an ongoing rulemaking process by the Fish and Game Commission. Since the passage of AB 1213, the commission has invested substantial resources in the rulemaking. To date, thousands of Californians have submitted comments to the commission and dozens have traveled to commission meetings around the state to testify in support of AB 1213 implementation. The overwhelming majority of public comments have supported maximum protection for bobcats under the law. The commission is required under existing law to finalize its regulations this year and is on track to adopt final regulations in August. SB 457, by changing the requirements of a rulemaking process that is already underway and is statutorily required to be completed before the bill would ever take effect is untimely, unnecessary, and ultimately serves little purpose but to undermine this rulemaking. Moreover, substantively, the bill would replace a clear standard for the setting of no trapping buffer zones with one that is completely ambiguous. Current law generally requires buffers to be drawn, drawn around highways and other major roads. Highways were chosen to delimit the buffers, not just because they are easy to identify and enforce, but also because it is an unfortunate reality that highways act as impediments to wildlife movement. The bobcats that inhabit Joshua Tree and other national parks wander freely out of the park's boundaries, 
but their home ranges rarely extend across busy highways that are nearly impossible for these animals to safely cross. Consequently, in most circumstances, a highway delimited no trapping zone can protect a park's bobcat population. SB 457 eliminates the requirement that buffers be tied to highways, lacks any criteria regarding the size of the required buffers, and consequently would allow buffers that are so narrow as to be ecologically meaningless, permitting trappers to kill bobcats near the boundaries of parks and thus defeating the very purposes of AB 1213. For the same reasons that the legislature passed AB 1213, this committee should reject SB 457. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And you have a question, Senator Allen? Of this this would be for any of the four folks who are up here. I, I just, um, you know, I, I noticed in the comments that talked about how uh, the legislative findings from AB 1213 said that we should figure out, get good bob pet population data in the state, which is apparently not available. I'd love to hear from both sides about, you know, the extent to which, um, you know, we understand the bobcat population trends around the state. Um, is there overpopulation? Is there not? I, I, I want to get a better sense of this. Um, the last population um, study of the state of bobcats that was done at a statewide level was over 30 plus years ago and was struck down by a court as inadequate. Um, so there is no current um, credible estimate. What we do know, there's a general sense that bobcats statewide are probably doing okay. But what we do know is that trapping can have significant local effects. A single trapper operating in Joshua Tree, where this bill originated, killed 47 bobcats in a single 10-week season, which is equivalent to the, all the bobcats in a 100-square-mile area. Visitors to the park, residents to the park, who used to regularly see bobcats, don't see them anymore. And that was the key purpose of AB 1213, to protect bobcats in these local tourism-dependent wildlife areas where we know that trapping can have an impact. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that um, this, I understand in the Joshua Tree context, it seems to have had impact elsewhere in the state. I mean, can you comment on maybe differences between the Joshua Tree situation and other parts of the state? And obviously it applies statewide. Um, what we really don't know is that the, because there are no, um, no studies, We've heard anecdotally, um, there's lots of concern from folks in the Mono Lake area where there's heavy trapping going on and, and people who um, live and work in that area, including in the state park, have commented on that bobcats are becoming increasingly scarce because of the intense trapping. So we know in any place that has intense trapping, bobcats become scarce. You know, there's, it's, there's not trapping in many parts of the state. In those areas, bobcats are probably doing fine. You know, they face a whole realm of other threats road traffic, habitat fragmentation, rodenticides, and other things. But we do know trapping clearly is significant impact locally, and that's where non-consumptive uses of wildlife occur, wildlife viewing. That's where the ecological impacts are felt. Right. I, I would like to, to, to add to that. Um, yep. In the governor's signing statement, he mentioned a desire to have more information about um, the bobcat population, and I think that's very valuable, and I think that there's an opportunity for the legislature to work with the, the administration in um, having that study take place. Um, it is always a challenge to operate wildlife management um, in the unknown, and I think that's when sort of emotions creep in is when we don't have the information. And this does not preclude the census right. that can be taken. Right. I know that. Okay. Uh, final questions of any of the witnesses? Senator Stone? Yes. Uh, thank you, sir, for your, your testimony. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, it, it seems to me that uh, AB 1213 was, was never intended to basically put a moratorium on, on bobcat trapping, and it was uh, designed to protect the habitat with uh, boundaries around where they're known to habitate, if you will. And it seems to me that uh, all they're doing is wanting to use a tool of GPS. And, and in my mind, uh, that may uh, further the protection of, uh, of bobcats, an area that, you know, are not necessarily bound by certain roads and highways. Uh, can, you, can you respond to the, the added protection? I think that maybe the GPS tool might be uh, giving to you in your, in your, in your thoughts. First, on the, the first question, the AB 1213, which is codified in Fish and Game Code 4155F, explicitly recognizes the authority of the commission to ban bobcat trapping statewide and contemplates that that may be a result. So, um, so that is, was actually contemplated by the legislature as possible. Um, yes, every, I think everyone's aware GPS. Would that be your preference? 
Yes. It would be your preference to ban bobcat, bobcat trapping, trapping yeah. altogether. Yeah, and, and that's been the preference of the overwhelming majority of public comments at, to the Fish and Game Commission. And moreover, existing law um, passed in 2012, I believe, codified in Fish and Game Code 4006C, um, requires trapping license fees to be set to recover the full cost of the program. The commission has failed to implement that law, which I believe was uh, Senator Pavley's law. AB 1213 set a deadline for that. The reason that's important is the state has been subsidizing the bobcat trapping um, program for well, for as long as it's been, but subsidizing it illegally for several years. And as the state works through the cost it's actually spending on bobcat trapping, that I think is partly what's driving the commission towards contemplating banning the practice. Because um, right now it's fewer than 100 trappers, but it's costing the state hundreds of thousands of dollars to administer with significant ecological impact. Madam Chair, if I may respond to Senator let, Stone. Let me find out if you're finished with him. Well, I, just want, I, want, I, want, I want you to answer the question, though. Do you, do you feel that the GPS tools would uh, better identify habitats that you're trying to protect? In my view, just arbitrarily applying to the roads may not give you the protections that you're seeking here today. Yeah. Ideally, we would have statewide ecological studies that determine site-specific best buffers. That's prohibitively expensive. Yeah. The, the downside of GPS is the trapper may know where they're where they're trapping, but the general public doesn't. This whole controversy arose because people found traps on their own private property that were placed there without their permission. And by setting a clear boundary of a highway, everyone knows which side of the line trapping is legal. GPS, on the other hand, is extremely difficult to enforce. Thank you. I would argue that the average citizen has access to the same GPS and it would be helpful to them. And I would argue the very worst way to proceed with wildlife management is lacking any evidence, lacking any census. That's the very worst way. That's a knee-jerk approach. We want to do things, let's do them in a scientific manner. Let's have counts. I'm happy to amend the bill to include that there be such a census. Thank you. It would be a fiscal issue in appropriations, but right. And um, also there's an option that the Fish and Wildlife may be recommending some minor fee increase to accomplish some of those surveys or other kinds of things on the wish list out there. Any other questions? No, I'm finished. Thank, Thank you very much. And I want to excuse all four witnesses unless there's questions of any of them and um, ask if anyone else wishes to lend their name and up in opposition to this measure. Just name and affiliation, please. Hello, Haley Stewart with Defenders of Wildlife in Opposition. In Opposition. Olivia Regalia with Sierra Club California in Opposition. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else opposing this measure? Seeing and hearing none, I'll open it up for discussion by members of the committee before uh, Senator Nielsen gives his close. Any other questions of Senator Nielsen? or? Comments. Well, uh, or would you like him to close? <laughs> Any questions of the I'll wait speaker? Wait. Senator Nielsen, let's hear it. Thank you. Let's close. You had one question. Yeah. Senator Nielsen, I just want to get back to the last question. I, uh, I strongly feel that through the, the GPS coordinates that uh, you actually would be uh, providing a lot more clarity about where you can trap and where you can't trap. It work, would work to the benefit of those that want to trap. It would also work to the benefit of the, the environmental organizations that want to uh, preserve uh, the bobcat population. And I haven't, I haven't heard any evidence today that there's any threat to their population. Can you just kind of expand on that a little bit? Well, that's the point. That there's no one who has contested that it's ever since, 1213 to today. Maybe there's not been one in 50 years that would argue that it's time to have such a census. And again, I'm happy to accept that as an author's amendment if that wins support of the bill today. Uh, and I, 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 it's not only logical, I'm not a GPS scientist, okay? But there is no, it's inarguable that that gives greater specificity to everything we're doing on the face of the earth today. 
And wouldn't it be that we would want to have that option available to the Fish and Game Commission to allow them to have that greatest specificity? A road is so arbitrary. Probably it could be very harmful to the Wabcat population. But if they do a census and identify, and they're going to be doing census in different regions, so they'll have that opportunity, and then the best way to protect that would be with greater specificity, which would be allowed by such things as landmarks and or the, uh, the GPS. And it doesn't preclude roads either. So you're just giving them more options to better identify and manage the population, I would argue, Senator Stone. Well, I haven't heard any arguments that uh, it is a threatened species. I think the federal government would get involved if there, if there was. And, and you represent how many counties? Well, right now, only nine, but over nine the years, counties. 19. Okay, but so. over, over some significant uh, geographical areas that are somewhat rural, that uh, you know, this would be uh, uh, certainly applicable to as far as uh, trappers having the ability to, to use GPS to make sure that uh, there is appropriate protections around the areas that are wished to be protected by AD. But Senator, I must uh, expand though. Now, as predator species are growing in numbers, certain ones, every day we're reading incidences of these species, the wildlife, getting into cities. We had a black bear in a, in a major city, the area that I represent. We've had mountain lions all the time for decades in our cities and our suburban areas. In many areas of the state, uh, there's a huge loss of pet population to these predators. Many predators, I'm not just talking about bobcats. But let's say, yes, they're a, they're a unique problem in the, in the rural areas because of the wild uh, uh, nature and how hard it is to decide what a road is out there. But I'm saying that our understanding and the need for greater specificity applies to suburban and urban areas as well to a lesser degree because wildlife don't, as, as usual, want to go there, but they are increasingly and have been for decades. Is there a livestock industry in, in all the counties that you represent? And we heard that there's an impact on the mountain lions taking well, down I, the chicken. I, there is no question. No. <laughs> I've lost many. I, I won't even tell you the stories that I have personally witnessed. Senator They're kind of gory. May I, um, just because sure. the clock is ticking, mm -hmm. have uh, Senator Nielsen, I think he gets a, where you'd like okay. him to go in answering those questions um, in your close address any last items you wish to address, including anything from Senator Stone. So it's time for a close, sir. Yes, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, I, in, in closing, I think that this enhances the intent of 2013. And if the committee is not uh, amenable to, to a, such an amendment for a census here today, I'm willing to take it and make a pledge to do that down the way, uh, because I think that is necessary. I would argue that, uh, that our inference, and I do not speak for the Fish and Game Commission, but it, it appears that they would like a little bit of help and greater clarity. So this would enhance, and I would argue uh, irrevocably that if we had that GPS option available, we would be better able to manage this population. So I would urge an I vote. Uh, thank you uh, very much for your presentation. Opening it up for uh, committee members, Senator Allen, did you wish to say something? Yeah, I guess I just, I, I, I think that it seems to make sense to, for us to be looking at a census. Um, I don't feel as though I'm ready to support this sort of thing until we have more data, uh, particularly given how recent the passage of this is and all the kind of reasons articulated in the, in the, in the analysis. But um, I do think this discussion points out the need for more information about the population of bobcats around the state and the issue of the geographies and pockets and maybe the differences that might exist in and around Joshua National Park vis-a-vis uh, -vis other parts of the state. Well, Madam Chair. Uh, you have closed, and unless there's a question, I'm going to have to. I'd be happy to. I mean, okay. Did you want to, did you want to. The, the, this is a response. I, I'd be willing to uh, put the bill over. We've got another hearing, I think, ahead of us and try to come up with a, 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 a uh, an analysis of what a census would look like. Focus on a census. Okay. Uh, is there a motion? No. Uh, a comment, and I have a comment. 